Tonight on EIV News at 6, coverage of the first Democratic debate. And later, news on a gun store held liable for the sale of a firearm that turned deadly. Good evening, and welcome to this edition of EIV News at 6. I'm Jacob Carrozza. And I'm Gina Berzeo. We begin with tonight's top stories. After two GOP debates, Democrats finally got in on the fun. The Democrats had their first presidential debate Tuesday night in Las Vegas, and leading candidates Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders both performed well. Sanders successfully defended his socialist policy positions in the face of criticism, and Clinton shook off claims she flip-flopped on key policy positions like the Keystone XL pipeline. The broadcast was the highest rated Democratic debate ever. During that debate, Bernie Sanders did his chief rival a solid. Sanders dismissed talk about the Hillary Clinton email scandal, making the point early in the debate allowed Clinton to talk, or to talk about her policies instead of defending her email practices. Media reports agreed both candidates went on to do well in the debate. Planned Parenthood is responding to controversy. The organization announced it will no longer accept money in exchange for providing medical researchers with fetal tissue. This comes after months of attacks following undercover videos that appear to show officials discussing the sale of tissue. Some have called the announcement an admission of guilt. The group contends this move is simply to allow women to resume safely donating fetal tissue if they wish to. Disturbing news about the mistreatment of women overseas. The Taliban is targeting women during its occupation of Kunduz. The group harassed women with public profiles and destroyed organizations that supported them when they began occupying the city. With a threat of violence looming, many women live in fear, standing out, standing out that this campaign of fear could slow the advancement of women's rights in the region. News on a controversial court ruling. A Milwaukee jury ordered a gun shop to pay almost $6 million in penalties. A teenager without a gun license allegedly shot two police officers in the face using a firearm from Badger Guns. The two officers then sued and are being compensated for their injuries. Badger Guns is known as the number one crime dealer in America with more than 500 firearms recovered at crime scenes traced back to the shop. More drama surrounding the House Benghazi investigation. Former committee staffer Bradley Poliska claims that Republican Congressman Trey Gowdy targeted Hillary Clinton politically with his investigation. He also says that he was fired from his position on the committee because he resisted intense pressure to be a part of the partisan investigation. Republicans res responded by saying that Poliska was not fired for resisting partisan pressure, but rather because he mishandled classified information. A potentially dangerous nuclear power plant is closing. Pilgrim Nuclear Power Plant in Plymouth, Massachusetts was recently rated the least safe nuclear power plant in the country. The shutdown of the plant was announced Tuesday, but the process to close a nuclear power plant is a complicated one. Decommissioning a plant can take decades and cost millions of dollars. While the plant has been given 60 years to close, officials say it won't take that long. Critics worry companies are inexperienced with safely decommissioning plants. The government is looking to aid students in new ways. The Education Department announced that it would launch a pilot program providing financial aid for students enrolled in non-traditional schooling. Students enrolled in programs like coding boot camps and massive open online courses will be allowed to apply for grants and federal loans to help pay. Only students enrolled in accredited programs offered through accredited universities will be allowed to apply for the aid. A GOP presidential hopeful may have scored a key endorsement. Billionaire mogul and GOP contributor Sheldon Adelson is warming up to Marco Rubio. Adelson has made no final decision on whom he will support in the Republican primary, but is leaning strongly towards the Florida senator. Adelson and Rubio reportedly met in private last week. Adelson is one of the party's most sought-after contributors and has been aggressively courted by many candidates. Now with the latest in news from around the world, our international correspondent, Swetha Amarayson. Thanks, guys. Violence persists in a peaceful religious sanctuary. Yesterday, a man in camouflage and armed with a knife was shot dead by Israeli police after rushing past Jerusalem's Damascus Gate, after disobeying the orders of the officers to stop. He was shot at least a dozen times. The man was believed to be a terrorist by the police force. Israel has tightened security in response to the fatal violence that has been occurring in the region recently. Fatal explosions are being investigated. Two deadly blasts hit an afternoon peace rally in Ankara, Turkey last Saturday. 
The bombings killed 97 and injured about 246. Prime Minister Ahmet Davutoglu, among others, believes the attacks were the work of both ISIS and the PKK, which is a militant group fighting for separation from the Turkish state. It was announced Tuesday that the authorities will be using DNA tests and other evidence to find the culprits. A German man has been accused of a hateful arson attack. A fire burned down a house full of Syrian refugees in Altina, Germany on October 3rd. A firefighter has been accused of setting the residents ablaze after having told authorities he was scared of refugees. Another 23-year-old man also turned himself in to authorities in relation to the attack. The men were charged with severe arson, not attempted murder, and were also not charged with political hate crime. That's all I have for international news. Back to you. Thanks, Swetha. Coming up on EIV News at 6, a former athlete and reality star is in the hospital fighting for his life. And later, a woman takes her 12-year-old nephew to court. All that and more when we return on EIV News at 6. Welcome back to EIV News at 6. We go now to Ann Carroll, who has the latest from the world of sports. A shocking firing in the world of college football. Steve Sarkeesian, head coach of the USC Trojans, was fired this week after showing up intoxicated to team meetings. On Sunday, USC's athletic director determined that Sarkeesian was unhealthy and did not meet USC's standards. In August, Sarkeesian showed up to a team event intoxicated, but later apologized for the incident. Now let's take a look at the NFL. Going into week six of the NFL se season, there are still six undefeated teams in the league, thanks largely in part to the work of their offenses. The New England Patriots, Atlanta Falcons, Cincinnati Bengals, Carolina Panthers, Denver Broncos, and Green Bay Packers have all averaged over 24 points a game per season. The Patriots lead all of these teams, averaging over 39 points per game so far. In the last time there were six undefeated NFL teams this late in the season was 2003. And we are one step closer to proving that Back to the Future was right. The Chicago Cubs are officially in the NLCS after a 6-4 win over the St. Louis Cardinals. This is especially remarkable because besides their World Series win, in 1908, the Cubs have never clinched a, a playoff series home win at Wrigley Field. And if you're trying to do the math, that's 107 years. The Cubs will face the winner of the New York Mets and Los Angeles Dodgers series. And that's all for this week in sports. Back to you, Gina and Jacob. Thanks, Anne. In other news, a tech giant is paying up this week. Apple is facing a payment of more than $862 million after losing a patent lawsuit. The case was filed by the University of Wisconsin and claimed that Apple used microchips without permission in some phones and iPads. The university filed a patent for microchips in 1998. The school claims that Apple ignored its offers to license it, therefore they are willfully infringing on the patent. Playboy is going PG-13. After dwindling sales, the magazine will no longer feature nude models. When the Playboy web website stopped showing nudity in August, web traffic increased by 12 million, million views. Executives say the magazine cannot compete with the abundance of online pornography. The company hopes the change will help reduce the readership losses it has seen in recent years. Celebrities are uniting for a cause. Julianne Moore has recently launched a gun control campaign that is backed by more than 80 celebrities. Moore says that she was inspired to take action and begin the campaign after the 2012 Sandy Hook Elementary School shooting in Newtown. The involved celebrities intend to get their fans involved by setting up public events and asking for ideas to continually increase the outreach for the organization. A former reality star has found himself fighting for his life. Former NBA star Lamar Odom was found unconscious at a Nevada brothel late last Tuesday. Odom lost consciousness at the Love Ranch, 70 miles outside Las Vegas, and was rushed to, De to Desert View Hospital in nearby Pahrump. Odom is a former player for the Los Angeles Lakers and Dallas Mavericks and gained wide widespread fame in 2009 with his marriage to Khloe Kardashian. One family's drama has been taken to court this week. A New York woman sued her 12-year-old nephew for $127,000, claiming that he broke her wrist four years ago. The child allegedly jumped while greeting his aunt at his eighth birthday party, fracturing her wrist when she tried to catch him. She lost her case in court. When we come back, a look at our week ahead with our five-day forecast. Welcome back to EIV News at 6. We go now to our weather correspondent, Rebecca Hankins, with your forecast. Thanks, guys. It's great to be here. 
And I hate to break it to you guys, but say your final goodbyes to your shorts and summer prints and hello to the official start of Sweater Weather as we dive into mid-October this week and are finally seeing and feeling the fall season. We started off our Thursday morning with intervals of clouds and sunshine. With winds coming out of the west and reaching 15 miles per hour, we saw a high of 60 degrees. And for tonight, we're looking at the temperature to drop to a low of 46 degrees and skies to stay clear. Now let's take a look at our weekend ahead and the five-day forecast. This weekend is looking to be ideal to squeeze in some last-minute fall activities, like picking the perfect pumpkin to carve or your favorite kind of apples. Saturday is going to be mainly sunny with a few clouds in the afternoon. The high will be 55 degrees and the low will be a brisk 36 degrees. So, you may, so make sure you have an extra blanket by. Sunday is going to be a little cooler with partly cloudy skies. The high will be 49 degrees and a low of yet again 36 degrees. Monday, we, still, we will see more sun and higher temps, with a high of 52 and a low of 41 degrees. Tuesday will be mostly sunny, with winds reaching up to 25 miles per hour. The high will be 66 degrees, and the low will be 48 in the evening. Wednesday, we are going to see even warmer temps, with a high of 67 and a low of 53 at night. There's a possible chance of rain, so make sure you grab that raincoat on the way out. That's all I have for weather for you guys this week. I'm Rebecca Hankins. Back to the desk. Thanks, Rebecca. Well, that's all we have for tonight. I'm Jacob Carrozza. And I'm Gina Brzeo. Thanks for watching.